By day, Yanis Varoufakis is an economic professor. By Monday, he could be Syria's finance minister. What would a Syria's government do in the first 100 days? Three main things. Firstly, we need to deal with the humanitarian crisis. It is preposterous that in 2015 we had people that had jobs and homes and some, some of them had shops up until a couple of years ago and are sleeping rough and are going to bed hungry at night. Uh, it is uh, unacceptable that you have school kids doing their homework under the candlelight because their electricity supply has been discontinued due to the fact that the state, in its infinite wisdom, decided to tax property through the electricity bill, for God's sakes. These are things that cost very little money and have m a major symbolic, social and moral impact. So this is one of the three planks. The second thing we need to do in this country is to reform it. To reform it deeply and to reform it in a way that attacks what I call the triangle of sin. The triangle of sin in Greece com comprises the procurement aspects of the state, where you have rent-seeking suppliers of the state charging an arm and a leg. Um, a, a Greek motorway costs three times uh, what it costs France to build a motorway that is unacceptable. Secondly, the second part of the triangle is the, the bankrupt bankers uh, who are uh, exacting a major price. Um, and thirdly, the mass media, uh, which are per per perpetually bankrupt. And one should ask questions as, such as, so how can they manage to make ends meet when they've never had showed the profit you in their history? You can almost hear, though, Mr. Varoufakis, the European centre saying, here is a left-wing party meddling with freedom of speech. The opposite. The opposite. We are absolutely committed to freedom of speech. And freedom of speech in Greece has been jeopardised by this uh, unholy alliance between bankrupt bankers, developers, and uh, media owners who become the voice of those who want to sponge and scrounge of everyone else's uh, productive efforts. And what will you do to the oligarchy concretely? We are going to destroy the basis upon which they have built for decade after decade a system and network that viciously sucks the energy and the economic uh, um, power from everybody else in society. You're not just an economist, you know the history of this country. You know what happened last time somebody tried to take power from the Greek oligarchy. The good fight has to be fought independently of costs. And the cost might be that at some point a series of governments sees a challenge to democracy. There is no alternative to remain steadfast in our opposition to those forces that are essentially depriving democracy of its substance. And go let's go to the third plank, the third plank yeah. of course, so humanitarian yeah, crisis, yeah. Um, reforming Greece, uh, attacking the oligarchy, mm -hmm. um, doing away with tax immunity, because the problem is not so much, so much tax evasion, it's tax immunity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, and the third thing of course is renegotiating this uh, loan agreement with our European yeah. partners, which has been detrimental to Europe as a whole. Mm -hmm. You guys have been on the outside of politics for years. What did it feel like to suddenly come to the brink of power? Scary. One word, scary. Um, but on the other hand, having said that, even in universities where I, I've lived all my life, in Britain, Australia and so on, I always believed that any colleague of mine who wanted to be head of department or dean should be disqualified immediately because you should only be doing this reluctantly as public service. So we are reluctant uh, candidates power and it's unfortunately history and this crisis has thrust us upon center stage and now we have inherited this poison chalice of having to do basic things that even bourgeois parties should be doing which they didn't do and if you or one of your colleagues ends up walking into the euro group in two weeks time what will you say to them it is time to speak the truth about the unsustainability of uh, the major denial with which Europe treated a bankruptcy in its midst and an architectural problem of the euro system. And the chances of Greece being forced out of the euro are for you? Zero. What happens to the eurozone if it carries on as it is? If we don't reform the euro system, if we do not create shock absorbers and what I call surplus recycling mechanisms within the eurozone, the eurozone is going to be um, toast in, in, in a couple of years. Why? And, well, because you can't have a monetary union 
which uh, pretends that it can survive a major financial crisis uh, simply by lending more money to the deficit countries on condition that they should shrink their income.